This video takes a look at Module 2, Lesson 3, Understanding the Addition of Integers. Uh, once again, picture down here are some important keywords we may need. Uh, obviously, integers, positive uh, whole numbers, their opposites, and zero. Opposite numbers often help us with adding because opposite numbers add together and make additive inverses, which always sum to zero. So today you guys are going to understand uh, addition of integers as putting together or counting up. And for negative numbers, counting up is actually counting down. Uh, you know you got this when you are able to fluently add integers. And this is our standard. It is a very long standard, uh, 7NSA1B. You can read through this, but uh, this deals with the ability of understanding the addition of integers in depth. To open this lesson, we are going to look at uh, these two different addition equations. So we have 2 plus 4 equaling 6 and 2 plus negative 4 equaling negative 2. So in the first lesson with adding integers, we did these individual hops, right? So we did, we started at 0, we went over 2, and then from wherever it left off, we would count on from there with individual hops. And you see the same thing here with a negative going to the left. Now, we move from that into one individual movement, totaling the amount of steps you need to take in lesson 2. So we started drawing arrows, also known as vectors. Um, and we learned that the absolute value of the numbers we are adding, or add-ins, told you how long the vector or the arrow needed to be. It's just the negative would point to the left and the positive points to the right. Now, if I scroll down here a little bit, what we are going to do is assume like two, we're going to call that our P. So our first letter, or our first number, excuse me, our first add-in, we're going to use a uh, variable P to represent that and a Q as a variable to represent the second one. Just like we use K to represent constant of proportionality. Same idea. Now, what we're focused on here is how far our sum is away from our first add-in. So, P is our, we're starting at zero and we would count two to the right. The arrow would be two units long and point to the right. The absolute value of this second add-in of four is four. So starting at two, you would count up four units to the right, which we see here. Now the sum or the answer is six. Six is four units away from two. Now if I look here, similar question except the second add-in is negative. And our sum, therefore, becomes negative 2. Negative 2 is 4 units away from 2. The 4 units comes from the absolute value of negative 4. So the sum is always the second add-in's absolute values distance from the first one. Now, if we look at this vertically, if you're adding, uh, you count up, literally up, right, because there are positives. If you're adding positives, you're literally counting up. Then when you add a negative, you're actually counting down, okay, on a vertical number line because your negatives are, are down, okay? So that's just a visual representation, um, an in-depth look at what's happening. But really we're looking at this distance idea, the fact that 6 is 4 units away from 2. And negative 2 is 4 units away from 2. Okay? So, what I want you to do is go through, answer parts A through C, and then when you're done, come back and check the video. We will go over these three prior to moving to D through F. All right, for A, it says uh, for each example above, what is the distance between 2 and the sum? The distance, regardless, was always four units, right? Um, this, and if we be better even go down here, six is four units away from two, and negative two is four units away from two, okay? Now, does the sum lie to the right or the left of two 
on a horizontal number line and above or below on a vertical. So let's start with the horizontal. On the first model, the sum lies to the right of two. On the second model, it lies to the left of two. All right, so it's different depending on our expression, right? But regardless, it is four units away. Now let's look at our vertical. On the first model, the sum lies above two. On the second model, it lies below two. So if we scroll down here, right, on our first model, it is above two because we went in the positive direction. We got larger by four. But on our second model, it lays below two because we went in our negative direction. We added a negative. We got smaller. Okay. Now, C, given the expression 54 plus 81, uh, determine without finding the sum between 54 the distance between 54 and the sum. The distance will be 81 units. When the Q value, which is our second number, is positive, the sum will be to the right of or above, if it's on a vertical number line, the P value, the same number of units as the Q value. So just to be clear with what I'm talking about, this first integer is going to be represented by P, and the second integer is going to be represented by Q, okay? We can ob obviously substitute real integers in there uh, to model a situation, but in general, that first number, we're going to use the variable P, and the second number, we are going to use the variable Q. Now, go through and answer D through F. When you are done, come and check the video, and we will go over these three. All right, for D, it's asking, is the sum to the right or left of 54 and above or below 54? The sum would be to the right of 54 on a horizontal number line and above 54 on a vertical number line, okay, because we are adding a positive. Now, given this expression, 14 plus negative 3, the distance between 14 and the sum. The distance will be 3 units. When the Q value is negative, the sum will be to the left of or below the P value, the same number of units as the Q value. Okay? So we know this is this value here is going to be three units. Our sum is going to be three units away from 14. Um, but in this case, it's going to lie below 14 because our Q, our second add-in, is negative. Now, F, the sum is to the left of 14 on a horizontal number line and below 14 on on a vertical number line. So basically, this is the main idea here. Whatever your first number is, if you're adding a negative, you are going, your answer, your sum is going to be to the left or below that first P value. If you are adding and the second number is positive, your sum will be to the right or above that initial P value. Exercise two is going to give you guys some uh, time to practice. So go through exercise two, parts A, B, and C. And then when you are done, come back and check the video to make sure you did those three correctly. For exercise two, uh, part A, you should have got a sum of negative two. Uh, I use the arrows, the vector method, in order to display this on the number line. You could have also used the hops, either way works. Should end up at negative two, and notice that the sum, negative two, which is where we ended, that second arrow, is three units to the right of negative five. For part B, you should have got negative eight. Um, the sum is two units to the left of negative six. Um, 
Notice we need to count down two times because we have a negative followed by another negative. For C, the sum is negative 1. Um, the sum is 8 units to the left of 7 because our second integer is a negative. So that means that will put the sum to the left of whatever the original p-value is. Now, uh, exercise three, I believe that's the last exercise before you guys are uh, getting through to the problem set. So go through, you're going to write your equation that represents this situation in the box. Then you're going to model it on this number line. So read through it a few times just to provide some clarity for what you need to do. Then write that equation and number line and come back and check the video before we go forward to the problem set. For exercise 3, you should have gotten a sum of negative 9. So to break this down, it says the sum of 6, so that tells me 6 is my first number, and a number, so that other number I don't know yet, but it is 15 units to the left of 6. A number that is 15 units to the left of 6 must be a negative 15. If it was 15 units to the right, it'd be a positive 15. But because it's to the left, it is a negative 15. So I have 6 plus negative 15, and once I drew that, I ended up at negative 9. So the sum of these two numbers has to be negative 9. Final step of this lesson is the problem set. Up here, we're going to go over our lesson summary. Adding an integer to a number can be represented on a number line as counting up when the integer is positive and counting down or to the left when the integer is negative. All right, and we know we can use arrows to represent this. So go through and answer. I believe there are five problem set questions. Uh, when you are done with those five problem set questions, check the video to make sure you did them correctly, and that will be the end of this lesson. With this being our third lesson here on adding integers, we should be developing that fluency. So that's that speed with accuracy. Um, that was mentioned at the very beginning in the I know I got it statement. So this problem set is a great opportunity to test this. Um, keep in mind, fluency deals with speed too, okay? So when I see like 2 plus negative 6, I should be able to get that answer relatively quickly. Now there will be more lessons heading forward to develop more uh, comfort with these adding integers, uh, but we should be moving closer to that fluency component. Um, with that said, here is the answer to problem set uh, question 1A. Here is the table. Uh, a rise should have been represented by a positive and a fall, um, a negative. You can see the answers. The, the temperatures is essentially the sum of these two. And then our equation here. If you needed, you should have used this vertical number line to help you work through that. Now, do you agree with or disagree with the following statement? A rise of negative 7 degrees Celsius means a fall of 7 degrees Celsius. That is correct. Um, now, we would never say a rise of negative 7 degrees. That doesn't really make sense. But mathematically speaking, this is an equivalent phrase. Okay, it, it, It's weird because you would never hear that in the real world. But mathematically, that's actually true. Now, uh, for 2... A, the answer is no. In order for the sum to be negative 10, at least one of the add-ins has to be negative. You can't end up at a negative sum without at least one number being negative, right? If you have two positives, you're moving to the right or up two times. You're not even going to get into the negative numbers. Now, B can be true. Uh, both cards cannot be positive, but one can be positive and one can be negative. She could have maybe negative 11 and 1, negative 12 and 2. Uh, that's fine as long as the card with the greatest absolute value is negative, right? Okay, can both be negative? Yes, of course. You could have negative 8 and negative 2, negative 5 and negative 5, negative 4 and negative 6. C is um, for sure true. 3A, you should have got negative 18. 3b, the distance is 10 units from negative 8 and would be to the left of negative 8. c, uh, the value of the hand should end up being 2 because negative 8 
plus 10 is 2. Number four, the distance would be 35 units from 67. Specifically, it would be 35 units to the left of 67 because that Q, that second add-in is negative. Five, which is our final question, this uh, negative four plus 12 would be eight. We have the sum of sum meaning add. We have negative four coming first and a number 12 units to the right. So that's a positive 12. And that ends up at 8. So once again, we should be getting more comfortable with these adding integers. If you were able to nail this problem set, these five questions, um, you should be comfortable uh, moving forward.